Wigan in Lancashire. It's the home of two of England's greatest rugby teams. But they can never play against each other because nearly 100 years ago, the world of rugby split apart. One of the teams based in the town centre is the world famous professional club, Wigan Rugby League. The other, just four miles away on the edge of town, is the amateur rugby union club, Oral. We are the best of the company. Tomorrow, Oral will complete their most successful season ever in Rugby Union's gruelling club championship. The players' financial reward, nothing. After winning their Rugby League Challenge Cup semi-final with a record-breaking score, Wigan are off to Wembley next Saturday for the Cup Final. And if they win, they'll be paid a bonus of at least £6,000 a man. Yes. This will be the 50th on the trot, we've been to Wembley, and it really is a dream come true. I don't think any of us in our wildest dreams could have thought that we'd make Wembley twice, certainly not five times, and we're absolutely thrilled to bits. Although, I must confess, at the beginning of the season, it certainly didn't look like that. Back in September, Wigan's captain, Ellery Hanley, who had led the team to three of its four successive Wembley wins, wouldn't sign a new contract with the club. The thought of him leaving was dreadful. He's unique. He is probably the greatest competitor that's ever played the game. We made a new offer to him. Uh, he considered it, but he declined it, basically because he'd had a better offer from Leeds. Well, chaps, I thought we might um, just start by reviewing the Ellery Hanley situation. Obviously, having chatted on Sunday, we all know that he's actually gone. Uh, I just thought I might formally record the actual details. Uh, I kept in touch with you as best I could on Friday on a blow-by-blow on -blow basis. Yeah. Um, the, the bottom line is that they finally increased their offer to £250,000. Asked us for stage payments. I resisted those as best I could, but there is a stage payment which you're aware of in it. Um, I think we should all finally agree that we, we did our absolute best to keep him at the club. I know that no one round the table wanted him to go, but we were faced with an impossible situation. And so we had to make the best of it. And so time will tell whether £250,000 is the right figure or not. The rugby union club, Oral, had an even worse start to the season. They lost a former captain, president and chairman. Eric Smith, the man who had helped bring Oral to the top of English rugby, died in August. He'd been a close friend and colleague of the team's coach, Des Seabrook, for 30 years. It is a, a particularly sad personal loss for me and I think the club, that at this time of the season, at the start of the season, we should lose the father figure, or Mr. Oral, as he was called, uh, in Eric Smith. Uh, it, for a family club, we're going to have to pull together because he was, as you might say, the head of the family. He was the one, he was the motivator, he was the one that got things done and had done for many, many years. And it is a, a sad loss. It was his last wish that at the end of his days, he would like to be buried, or his ashes to be buried, on the pitch. No, that's my sheet. That's fine. That's fine. That's right, thank All right. you. All right. So, so they don't discolour? Yeah. Right. We have entrusted our brother Eric to God's merciful keeping, and we now commit his ashes to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In short, it was our biggest disappointment last year where we didn't get to Twickenham because it would have been, you know, in his last year, a tremendous boost to him. And, uh, you know, we, we failed badly, and I think this year we would like to get to Twickenham, you know, and I think the spirit of Eric Smith is still there.
Across town, Wigan Rugby League has appointed a new captain, New Zealander Dean Bell, to replace Ellery Hanley. He's a far cry from the stereotyped image of a beer-swilling, rough-talking rugby player. Now that my wife works, the roles have been reversed. I suppose I've become a house husband. Because most of our training is, uh, is done at night. I'm the one responsible for um, doing the housework, getting tea ready and things like that. I don't mind it, you know, it's... It's quite enjoyable, it's different. On the field, his, um, his nickname is Mean Dean. He has one of the fiercest competitive spirits that you'll find, uh, as strong as Ellery Hanley's, but, but different, totally different to Ellery. They call you Mean Dean, explain. Mean Dean. Oh, I don't, I don't know how I get that really, I'm a bit of a softy. Um, I, I suppose. You know, I, I go out every game and I play at 100%, you know, every game. It's a team game. If we didn't all pull together in the same direction, we'd be on a losing side more than we would be a winning side. And over the past five years since I've been here, we've won a lot more games than we've lost. Sunday, September the 8th, Wigan versus Witness. It's the first home league match of the season, and the pressure is on Dean Bell and his teammates to prove that Wigan can win without the extraordinary skills of Ellery Hanley. It seems but a short while since Ellery Hanley was holding the cup aloft at the end of last season. Ellery, who then was known as the King, unfortunately now, Ellery Hanley is with us no more. So today, Wigan have to take the field without his genius. Wigan then, in this tussle of the Titans, kicking off deep into the Ingall area, the line of defence moving up quickly as the forwards come tearing out strongly. And no doubt that in these opening minutes, there's going to be a great battle between these forwards. A high kick from Edwards, he's dangerous. It's loose. Wigan flick it out, Leiden goes for the corner. Referee gives it. Witness couldn't take it cleanly. <laughs> Witness lost, spilled it out. We're going to have possession. Can they get it going? Trying to throw the ball loose and the touch judge is on. We're going to play a flatten. Touch judge is on. The flattened player is Dean Bell. For him, like all rugby league players, injuries are an occupational hazard. You don't really feel the pain at first. I mean, you feel a bit of pain when he's stitching you up. But I suppose the pain doesn't really come till after the game, when, you, when you've cooled down, when the adrenaline okay. stopped flowing. Look at him. Right up there, we've seen that. There's the flush. Just close your eyes and open it up again. Under the rule known as the blood bin, the team doctor has only 10 minutes to stop any bleeding, stitch Bell up, and get him back on the pitch. Ten stitches later, Dean Bell rejoins his teammates. I see my role on the field as trying to be an inspiration to my teammates. You know, if they, they see their captain leading by example, that will inspire them to do the same. Myers from behind the play of the ball moves it inside onto Dean Bell.
And they're throwing everything except the kitchen sink at each other. Edwards takes it, hoists a high, difficult ball towards the corner flag. It's bouncing awkwardly and over towards the corner flag. And it looks like Botica, and that must have sealed it. There goes the Hooter. Tremendous roar goes up. A fantastic game of rugby league football between Wigan and Widners ends with the final score. Wigan 26, Widners 18. When your wife saw you at the, the breakfast table, uh, what did she think? Well, I mean, um, her first reaction was that, uh, that she was going to go and get a paper bag, you know, put over my head, but, I mean, you know, I suppose she's used to it too, so... I mean, I've been quite lucky, I haven't had too many uh, bad injuries, but uh, things like this, they, they're very rare, and, you know, I wouldn't like to think that it puts uh, people off from uh, playing the game. For Simon Langford, the rugby union game's just as dangerous. He runs his own advertising agency plays for Oral in his spare time and hopes to keep his first team place for the 13th year running. I've had a few injury problems over the years. In the last 12 months, uh, my knee's not been so good. So uh, you have to try and overcome that problem. But uh, I will try to achieve uh, the level of fitness that is required uh, from the coaches there um, to uh, retain my place from last season. Um, but that's my ambition, obviously, is first and foremost, is to get into the side. Pre-season training at Oral. Ready, ready, now! This year, Rugby Union's club championship has been delayed by the World Cup. So next Saturday's game against Bristol is just a friendly. Okay, knock him on his ass. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I can't really go. Even so, Oral are determined to win to start the real season full of confidence. Anything? Just the creaking. Uh, but there's no soreness when you do that. There's a little bit, a very little bit. A little bit at the end after you've done it. <laughs> I had a cartilage out when I was 16. And basically, it's the ache and pain of the bone banging against bone and uh, it uh, causes us some inflammation there and there will be some pain with it. But uh, that's something you have to suffer. Professionally, I have advised Simon that he shouldn't be playing if he wants a healthy body in later life. Um, what you do for somebody in that instance is make them aware of the situation they're in now. You try and make them aware of the situation in which they may find themselves, but the ultimate choice is out of the player. Um, he's been seen by a consultant, he's seen his own x-rays, he knows the state of his joints, and it is his choice to continue playing. Sammy Southern is Oral's veteran captain. Hello, Simon. Sammy, how are you? So your knee's OK? Very good. You spoke to Sarah. That's all right. You'll be fit for Bristol. That's good, because we need to win this one. All right. OK. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye, Simon. I'd class Simon as the, if you were the backbone of the side. He's, uh, he's always there through thick and thin, and he's, he's one of the players who really puts his body on the line. Uh, purely and simply, I think, for his mates, as much as anything else. And uh, both on and off the field, he uh, is very important to the side. There's bound to be one day that you're not going to be picked. There's now a lot more competition at the club, and uh, it's up to me to, to compete with that competition. But I certainly wouldn't uh, back him without a fight. We did miss it once. They're very serious immediately before the game. 
because some of them have rituals that they go through, sort of habits and, and that they feel they have to do. Uh, there's quite a lot of superstition in the dressing room. Things like, you know, which sock you put on first, which boot you put on first. Little things like that that are probably quite silly if you look at them, but mean a lot because it gets that player in the right frame of mind to go out and do what they have to do on the pitch. <laughs> We've got to get it between our ears what we're doing, what the objective is, right? What the aim is, individually and collectively, right? It's going to be a long, hard way to the end of the season, right? And it starts this week, getting it ready for next week, right? We've got to do it. We've got to do it. <coughs> Think about what it's going to be fucking hard. There's going to be a lot of graft, a lot of blood and a lot of sweat. We've got to, let me see them. We've got to, we've got to do it, all right? We've got to bust a gut. We pin it on. I keep giving you names. There's life on the sleeve. Or they take the fucking heart out and they pin it on the end of the fucking shirt. Now, come on. Things have changed. We're not going to run about in here. We've done all the stretching off. Everybody's warm. Everybody knows what they've got to do. a week and every Saturday afternoon from the start of September to the end of April physiotherapist Sarah Booth devotes herself to oral rugby during matches she watches every move every tackle every fall you're looking around the pitch and making sure that all the players are on the feet and if someone's limping to what degree you know, I expect players to go down you know it's a rough game but you just make sure they get up and if there's something very obviously so you should get on there and deal with it. Sam, what are you showing you for? These gappers, fucked. Just say, only coming off. Can't run. OK. If Simon is to come off, a substitute player must go on. Sarah tells the coaches on the oral bench. Simon wants off. Simon wants off. He wants off? Yeah. Why? He said he can't run with his knee. Oh, Billy. Mike. Mike, warm up. Hello. Strip, strip off and warm up. Simon. Simon, I can't keep running on it. Are you coming off? Oh. Well, I can't stand in the middle of the pitch. Ref, ref, sir. He's like, it's an old injury. Okay, mate, you're going to walk with it. Get a refreshment on? Yeah. <laughs> There are certain days when you feel it and you think, I'm making the right decision, continue to play. But uh, if you get enough enjoyment out of it, that's what's important. And you don't know what's around the corner when you're 35. They might have introduced a plastic knee that can be uh, adaptable by then. So you can get over those hurdles. <laughs> The oral replacement for Simon Langford is Mike Barton. <laughs> oral managed to hold Bristol to a three-all draw. It's enough to justify a celebration. Despite the pain in his knee, Simon now inflicts pain on his teammates by leading the karaoke on the four-hour drive all the way back up north. Over at Wigan Rugby League, they have a new captain, but they still need an outstanding player to fill Ellery Hanley's position on the field. Well, I'm off to Australia in about a week's time. I'm hoping to uh, bring back a world-class player um, to replace Ellery Hanley and, and strengthen the side. It's difficult because, of course, Ellery it only decided to leave the club almost at the beginning of the season. It's left us hardly any time at all. 
to locate a player of his standard. We didn't even know what position we should be looking for until Ellery made his mind up. Maurice Lindsay wants to sign up an Australian rugby league star named Gene Miles. Wigan coach John Money, also an Australian, knows Miles well. Just thought I'd better have a chat to you about uh, Gene. Uh, what are your thoughts there? Because obviously Gene can play in the back row and he can also pr probably do a, a centre's job over here. Great for you. Well, I've, I've always been a Miles fan. He's, uh, he's been the captain of the Broncos for the last season and a half. He was the, he was the captain of the year in, in the Sydney Premiership. He's played in the forwards. And the other thing that, that I've got in my head with Gene Miles is if we could sign him, um, we could bring him over here and play him in the backs. I think also he'll have a great... If we sign Gene, he'd have a big influence on the club, wouldn't it? Well, uh, he would. And, uh, He's such a, a good, honest bloke, isn't it? He is. Well, you know, he, he'd, be, he'd be great for the club. Yeah. I'm sure he would. And while you're in surface, um, stay away from the bikini girls and have a swim for me. <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane, Australia, October 1991. Any normal person would have to have rocks in their heads to be leaving uh, the weather like this and to be going over there. But you know, it's a it's a um, commitment I've made, and uh, you know, it really is only for seven and a half months. And uh, you know, I'll be back in this uh, bathing in this beautiful sunshine in that time. So you know, I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to the to the challenge over there. We we'll take that with us. Be better, huh? Everything happened so quickly. It was uh, this time last week. I still didn't know what I was doing, and uh, then Morris popped into town. Morris Lindsay, and uh, you know we sorted things out pretty quickly. He was uh, pretty keen to get me, and uh, he certainly convinced me that uh, my future lie in England. Take, come in, sit up on here, and help that. Push down. Push down. I just hope they don't expect that I step off the plane and set the world on fire straight away because I arrive on Thursday morning and uh, I'm expected to train on Thursday night and turn out for the club on Sunday. So let's just hope the fans give me uh, maybe three weeks to a month just to settle in and climatise and, uh, and I'll really start enjoying my football. And the prospect of your second child being born a POM, how does that grab you? Yeah, made in Australia, born in Britain. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that'll be very different, but uh, you know, he or she will only be four months old and we'll get her out of there anyway. Gene, how's uh, Debbie adjusting towards? Well, we're just about to find that out. This will be the hardest spot for uh, saying goodbye to a family. All right. Floor's in for this, John. All right, get, get us okay. nice and close. All right. Because if I kiss him, you want to oh, get it. Oh, you want to. That's lovely. Smash it. Okay, thank, thank you. Bye. Amid much publicity in the local press, Australian rugby league star Gene Miles has arrived in Wigan but he plays in only one match before he's injured in training. His is just one of a spate of injuries. Sean Edwards breaks a rib in the match against Featherstone. Even though he's fractured his wrist, Andy Gregory is still playing. Frano Botica's ankle is in plaster, and university student Phil Clark has a depressed fracture of the sternum. He's being strapped up for a fitness test before Sunday's match. He might have a sore okay. chest, that's a good hit, mate. That's a good hit. but there are compensations. Two more, huh? two more. Phil is probably one of the few students in Britain who earns more than his professors. Good hit, mate. Good hit. Good hit. Okay. One more. Okay, mate. Let's go again. <clears throat> He's declared fit for the season's most important game so far against Leeds. I'd like to see them blast them off the park. Uh, I'd like to come back for once in my life, a smug director, and just shake hands with the Leeds directors and say, tough luck. It's going to be a very competitive match, but I'll have my fingers crossed for the 80 minutes that we come out the winners, and I don't care whether it's by one point or by 40. It's still early in the season, but Wigan have already lost against Castleford, St Helens and Wakefield Trinity. For Wigan's new captain, Dean Bell, it's a heavy responsibility and the pressure is on. In, in bad times, I've just got to make sure everybody's minds are on the job. If I think things are getting a bit slack, I've just got to bring everybody together and let them know I'm not happy. One last one, last one, Dennis. 
Giving up on 300, Dennis. Leeds have always been uh, Wiggins, one of Wiggins' main um, opponents, and we're predicting a, a very hard game as usual, and we expect no favours off them. I'll lead by example, hopefully like I normally do, and just hopefully my players will follow me. Conditions absolutely appalling. Snow earlier on, the rain still belting down. This game has been billed as the greatest struggle so far this season. Away we go. Ford bang down in the very first battle of the game. Goulding to feed. And Golding gets it onto Schofield. Schofield, little overhead kick. Ford chasing it. He could well win this chase. Ford, he got. He should be there. And there's the opening try to Ford, set up by Schofield. Comes on to Gregory. Gregory dubbing it, and we're going to drop the ball. And Ford's going for the line. He's got to score. Well, is he got to be a gift of six points as Ford goes over? <laughs> there goes the Hooter. The final score, Wigan nil, Leeds 19. <laughs> I take it very personal, my game. If I don't think I've performed at a certain level, I feel very dejected. And, you know, if my personal performance is not up to scratch, you know, I, I can't sort of live with myself. Next week, what can Wigan Rugby League do to stop the rot?